Today we're going to be building what is called a teapot honeypot. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to spin it up so I can start ingesting those logs into our sock simulator. And to spin this up, you could use any cloud provider you like, such as Azure, DigitalOcean, Vulture, Linode, etc. You could also build this on-prem as well, using VMware or even VirtualBox. But again, for me, I am going to be using DigitalOcean. To get started, I am going to type in digitalocean.com and then we'll log in with an account. If you don't have an account, you can simply sign up or you can use the link down below and that gives you some credits. Now, once you've logged into DigitalOcean, you will likely have a blank page unless you've already created some droplets, aka virtual machines in the past. To get started and create a virtual machine, you wanna head over to create, which is this nice green button here, and then click on droplets. I am going to select a region that is close to me, which is Toronto. For the image, I am going to make sure that Ubuntu is selected. And for the version, I am going to be using 24.04. .04. Under the size, basic is okay. I do not need premium Intel, so let's go ahead and select regular. And ideally, you do want at least eight gigs of RAM, but I'm just gonna test this out and let's try it with two gigs. <laughs> Actually, yeah, this one right here, two gigs and one CPU. If it doesn't work, well, I'll just resize the virtual machine and go from there. Scrolling down, we do not need automatic backups. And yeah, we'll just create a password. What else here? We do not need a managed database. For the host name, you could name it whatever you like. But since this particular honeypot is going to be for our simulated client environment, I'm going to type in MTS and let's type in web server one that sounds pretty legit and then we'll click on create droplet now within a couple of seconds you will see droplet has been created and then you can click into the virtual machine itself and it will display your ipv4 address which is your public ip and then also your private ip if you like you could also add in a firewall but for me i do not have any firewalls because i want anybody from the internet to connect and or attack this honeypot. So if I scroll up and let's see here, I'll copy the public IP address, open up PowerShell on my laptop, and then I'll SSH, type in the user, which was root at, and paste in the public IP address. It'll say, are you sure you wanna connect? Yes. And then for the password, paste in the password. That is incorrect. Okay, let's do that one more time. All right, there you go. Once we are in, we can now begin updating and upgrading our repositories. Type in apt-get. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, let me clear out the screen. That way it's a lot easier to see. Type in apt-get update and apt-get upgrade-y. This will go out and do its thing, retrieve all of the updates, and then upgrade any kind of tools or repositories as needed. Once that's done, we can then move on to the next step, which is to create a new user because we don't want to run this with our root account, or at least I hope not. <laughs> so let me clear up the screen. And to create a new user, all we need to do is type in add user. And you know what? Hmm. Let's add in one of the simulated user accounts, shall we? I'll type in a Zach. For the new password, go ahead and just type in whatever password you want. And it'll ask you to enter in a value. So I'm just going to hit enter, enter, enter. Just go ahead and keep hitting enter until we are good to go. Now our user has been added right here. Adding new user, Zach. The next thing is to add Zach into the sudo group. And we can do this by typing in sudo user mod dash a capital G sudo Zach. Now Zach has sudo privileges, aka admin privileges. Go ahead and clear out the screen. And let's switch users by typing in su Zach. Now we can see that we are under the Zach account. If you take a look on the left-hand side, and just in case I can type in who am I, and it says Zach. Now let's go ahead and change into Zach's home directory by typing in cd forward slash home forward slash Zach. And now we'll clone the teapot GitHub repository. And I'll leave that link down below as well. So just like this, type in git clone, and then the URL for the teapot. Go ahead and hit enter. And let's type in ls just to make sure we got it. And we do have a directory called teapot ce. Go ahead and change into that directory. 
clear the screen. And if I type in ls, we could see that there is a script called install.sh. That is what we want to run. And to run it, I'll type in dot forward slash install tab for auto completion. And if you hit tab twice, it will list out all of the files and or directories that contain the word install or whatever word you're looking for. In my case, you can see that it listed out install.sh and the directory of installer. So we want to run install.sh. So let's go ahead and type that in and enter. Simply just follow the instructions. It says this script will now install. Do you want to install <laughs> Y or yes and the password. Based on my experience, this installation takes roughly about two minutes. What that means is that you can go get up, stretch, grab a drink, and then come back. After waiting for a bit, you might see this prompt saying become password. Just go ahead and type in whatever password you like. And if for whatever reason it fails, you can then try typing in Zach's password or whichever user that you created. Do note, since it did show up here, by running this installation, it will change your SSH port to 64295. So you no longer can SSH into your honeypot using the default port of 22. So instead, you have to specify the port of 64295 in order to SSH back in. This is very important because if you need to do some admin work and you try to get into your honeypot, but then you're like, what? It's getting refused connection. This is why. Just make sure you write down that port and you're good to go. Eventually, you will see this prompt where it would ask you what kind of install type would you want? Now, if you don't see this prompt after waiting about two to three minutes, go ahead and hit enter because sometimes it might just hang there. If we take a look at some of our options here, we have H, which is for Hive. And this is your teapot standard slash Hive installation. And that is what I'm going to be using. You do have the other options here like sensor LLM, which is pretty cool. Uses LLM based honeypots. This would actually be a pretty cool experiment down the road. We have a mini installation, a mobile installation, and a tar pit installation. I will select Hive or H. And again, if you recall, we did spin up this droplet with a two gigs of RAM and one CPU. So I am not sure this is going to work. If it doesn't, I might need to spin up a mini teapot. Enter in your web username. Hmm. I'll type in Zach. Your username is Zach, that is correct. Enter in the password. Let's use a different password instead. And there you go. Now let's just wait and see what happens. Perfect. It seems like there wasn't any errors. So that is great news. Let's take a look. It says active internet connections. Uh, we do have port 22 and then we have 64295. If you recall, that is the new port for us to SSH in to our honeypot. And it actually says here, Please reboot and reconnect via SSH on port this. So let's do that. Type in sudo reboot. That should kick me out, clear up the screen, and then we'll re-log into our VM in about a minute or two. All right, let's try this one more time here. Seems like my terminal is acting up here. So instead, what I'll do is let's try connecting directly into our honeypot with the proper port. I'll type in the flag dash P and then specify our port number, which was 64295. And let's try that. Still freezing up. So I blame the resources. <laughs> what I'll do here is restart my honeypot by toggling this off. Don't show me this again. That is okay. Okay. After you restarted your virtual machine, let's try SSHing into our honeypot without specifying a port. As you can see here, it says connect to the host connection refused. Hmm. Now, if you recall, we did see the port being changed. And to specify the port, we need to type in dash P and then type in the port number 64295. There you go. Type in yes. And now we'll type in the password. Paste that in there. Perfect. We are good to go. Clear out the screen here. And technically, if we installed everything correctly, we could actually log into the web GUI. Let's try that. Over to my web browser, open up a new tab, and then I'll type in HTTPS. Let's go ahead and copy the public IP of my honeypot, paste that in there. And Teapot's web GUI is listening on the port number 64297. Moment of truth, click on advanced and proceed. After some time, it actually error timed out. 
And I believe this is due to the amount of resources that we gave to our virtual machine. Now, if you want to resize it, all you need to do is just click on upsize and then we can select the one that we want. So instead of two gigs, which is very little for this honeypot, I'm going to go with my original, which is this one right here. Basic, regular, four virtual CPUs and eight gigs of RAM. Now, ideally you do want 16. However, that does cost quite a bit more. So I'll just leave this as eight for now, and then we'll see if that works. Now we do also need to turn off our virtual machine. As an alternative as well, if you didn't want to resize your virtual machine, you could also reinstall Teapot and maybe select the mini version instead of the standard version. Once our droplet is powered off, we'll go ahead and click on resize. And if we scroll up, we could see the progress of our virtual machine. Once it is done, we'll power on the virtual machine and then connect back in just to make sure it works. And then we'll try logging into the web GUI again. All right, this looks pretty good. Go ahead and toggle this back to on. We can see that it says eight gigs of memory here. Over to my PowerShell, I'm just gonna hit enter. And then let's try and reconnect back in via SSH. Paste in the password and we're good, perfect. Now let's go back over to our web browser, open up the new tab again, and just go ahead and refresh this page. Still says error connection refused, but I'll just wait a couple minutes. Maybe the service is taking its time to come back up. And we could actually check this by typing in systemctl status teapot. It is currently loaded, but it stopped. And you know what? Let's go ahead and restart teapot. Check out the status. Now it is active and running. Head back over to my web browser and let's refresh the page. There you go. For the username, I am going to type in the one that we used, which was Zach. And for the password, you wanna make sure that you enter in the password that you created during your teapot setup. This isn't the same password to log in via SSH. Now, if you use the same password, then by all means, type that in. And this is teapot. We do have a couple of options here. We have attack map, Cyberchef, Elastic View, Cabana, and Spiderfoot which is a nice OSINT tool if you haven't used it already. Kibana is where we can start searching our logs for this particular honeypot. Elastic Vu is just a database, if I remember correctly. Cyberchef, if you haven't heard of Cyberchef, I would recommend that you go and check that out. And we have the cool attack map that every executive loves. Right now we do not have anything, and that is because we just spun it up. But if you leave this on for a couple of hours, you would see some interesting traffic and some pew pew map, which is always nice to have. So that is how you spin up Teapot. And before closing out the video, I just wanted to show you that we did get a hit. Where is this from? Cambodia? Yeah, Cambodia and Germany. So yeah, the longer you leave this on, the more interesting traffic you'll see.